my group will be covering criminal harassment and stalking. I will be talking about current trends, debates, and news regarding stalking today. We are in the day and age where almost everyone is capable of gaining internet access, logging into social media, or contacting someone via phone call, FaceTime, text, or email. Which is why cyber stalking is the most common outlet of stalking behavior today. Globally, actually, because it's the most accessible. Because most people have access to a computer, a phone, anything like that. So, some really interesting developments in what some people call stalkerware um, are we all have apps on our phone that we never use. So, like, for example, in that picture in the top left, I don't know how many times I use the Numbers app or even your iCloud Drive. You never really go in there, but some things on your phone that you don't even know are connected are uh, Find My Friends or Find My iPhone. So this is uh, a pre-installed app, like I said, um, that comes free with your iPhone purchase. Um, so its intentions are good, so you lose your phone, you need a way of finding it. Or you want to know where you're, what your friend's doing, so you go on Find My Friends and you're like, oh, Cindy's at the park, good to know. But they're often being misused. For example, if you were in a domestic abuse relationship and your significant other got really angry and you were at work, for example, and you said, I don't want to wait here like a sitting duck for him to come and get angry at me, so I'm going to drive to my sister's house. Well, if he has the Find My Friends or the um, other tracking app, that's already preloaded on your phone, he can track where you're going. So he knows that you're not at work and he can follow you to your sister's house. As well, there are also apps in the app store that are actually invented to track a phone that can monitor calls, texts, or any online activity. So it can't get much easier than that. That's the easiest accessibility that you can have. You just go into the app store, download an app and you can completely stalk someone just from sitting in your room or maybe you're at work. And the last thing which I learned about pretty recently, the newest update on iPhones, um, it connects with AirPods, so those are the headphones without the cords, and it actually is an application that allows the microphone of an iPhone to transmit audio from those AirPods. So say I'm in room A and my friend's in room B and I leave my phone in her room and I have my AirPods and I put my AirPods in and if before I put my phone in her room I clicked that little um, ear icon there it's linking our devices together so when I leave my phone in her room and I'm in my room with my AirPods in I can hear every single thing that she's saying in the other room. This new application not only can you leave your phone in a different room and then you can hear what other people are saying about you behind your back but you could also leave your phone at say an insurance office where you could hear through your AirPods someone's social security, their address, their full name, their phone number, etc. In the last couple of years, there has been a public outcry about how characters in romantic comedies are portrayed as the poster couple of love, even when one or both of them have shown stalker-like qualities throughout the movie. Articles coming from Global News, The National Post, and many, many more go into depth about these seemingly harmless movies and reveal the majority of movies categorized under romantic comedy have at least one or more main characters who show stalker-esque tendencies even though they all have a happy ending where love conquers all, apparently including stalking. A couple of movie examples are Sleeping in Seattle. So after hearing a man on the radio, Meg Ryan's character Annie decides she's madly in love with the man behind the voice, and then she flies across the country to follow him and spy on him and his son. Another good example is the movie Something About Mary. 
So Ben Stiller's character Ted's dream prom date with Cameron Diaz's character Mary never happens due to an embarrassing injury at her home. Years later, Ted hires a private investigator to track down Mary so he can reconnect with her. Ted then finds out everything he can about her in order to trick her into dating him. Rom-coms subtly shape people's expectations of love. These films seem to also normalize stalking behavior and associate it with love, affection, and passion. Julia Littman a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Communication Studies at University of Michigan created a new study called I Did It Because I Never Stopped Loving You, The Effects of Media Portrayals of Persistent Pursuit on Beliefs About Stalking, where she took 426 female volunteers and had them watch different romantic comedies and then asked if they are more likely to agree with stalking myths, such as many alleged stalking victims are actually people who played hard to get and changed their minds afterwards. Or, an individual who goes to the extremes of stalking must really feel passionately for his or her love interest. At the end of the study, majority of the women agreed with these stalking myths after watching the movies. The study results showed that women who watch romantic comedies are actually more likely to tolerate stalking in the real world. I will also be talking about the control balance theory. So, the control balance theory explains that deviant behavior is most likely to occur when an individual has too much or too little control. A control balance is what we would consider to be normal, like me or you. The individual's control is equal and deviant behavior is very unlikely. In regards to stalkers, there are two different types according to this theory. A control surplus is when an individual has power and control over others and this individual already has all the control they want or need and do not feel the need to make direct victim contact but still feel they need to check up on the victim. This individual seeks minimal contact with the victim but will most likely still online stalk victims or even follow the victim but without making actual contact. An example would be a controlling or domestic abuse partner. A husband has complete control over his wife, yet he still tracks her phone and monitors her texts. The next type is a control deficit. So this is when an individual is controlled and lacks power. Individual attempts to overcompensate for lack of power with predatory behavior. This individual seeks direct contact with victim, like physical violence or rape. An example could be an old ex-boyfriend who cannot accept that the relationship is over. He confronts ex-girlfriend at her apartment. He violently beats her or rapes her. So this theory explains effectively why a stalker feels the need to stalk. And then these are our group sources. And that's all I have. Thank you.